Juan Williams. Juan, good to see you. What do you think? Nice Pretty you, shocking David. stuff, no? Yeah, because I think it's a real look inside what NPR executives really think. And, I, you know, for me, this is a revelation in the sense that here they are saying exactly how they view the world. And what's incredible to me is here they are doing people with doing business with people who identify themselves as members of the Muslim Brotherhood. Well, that's, that's it. They were, they were absolutely frank. I mean, these guys said we're part of Muslim Brotherhood. They had no problem with that. And let's talk specifically, though. Let's play clips from the tape to show what we're talking about. First of all, what they thought about the Tea Party. Here's what they said about the Tea Party. The current Republican Party, the particular Tea Party, is fanatically involved in people's personal lives and very fundamental mm -hmm. Christian, and I wouldn't even call it Christian. It's this no. weird evangelical I know, I know. kind of move. Okay, weird evangelicals. I mean, that's what the Tea Party's all about, right? Well, this is, you know, to me, this is so bitter. These are people who are saying that they are intellectuals, they're elitist, and they are, understand that the rest of us are somehow, especially now if you're in the Tea Party, you are a racist. And me sitting here, David, I'm a bigot. Remember that he says in another part of the tape that, you know what, they were right to get rid of me because yeah, I gonna, have no and, credibility. And Juan, we're going to get to that. I saved the, just... the best for last. But, but, well, but I'm just saying, yeah. you, you listen to this guy and the way that everybody who has a non-liberal orthodox point of view is somehow a bad person. You say, you know what, these are people who are anti-intellectual. They do not want to hear and engage in an honest debate. Right, right. Okay, well, one thing they said that really shocked the heck out of everybody was when they started, when these guys, obviously they were trying to bait these guys, the, the folks who were, who were phony members of the Muslim Brotherhood, they were trying to bait the NPR executives, but they did that. The, the NPR yes, executives rose to the bait, particularly about Jews and Israel. Let's play that yeah. part of the tape. Not too upset about uh, maybe a little bit less Jew influence of uh, Jewish money in NPR, but... Uh, Zionist coverage is quite substantial elsewhere. So. But um, I don't actually find it in NPR. The, what, what exactly? The, the Zionist or, or uh, pro Israel, even among funders. Nobody really? No. Pro Israel? I mean, it's there in those who own newspapers, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but no one owns NPR. That's incredible. That is essentially yeah. admitting oh to, the, to the libel that, in fact, uh, uh, all the newspapers are controlled by the Jews, all the media is, oh. but not NPR because we're but, not controlled exactly. by anybody. This is unbelievable. I mean, you know, it's just so awful. And you imagine he's sitting there having dinner and he's, or lunch, and he's saying this to a man who says that he's a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. And on their website, they're talking about wanting to advance Sharia law. And he's going ahead and buying into this libel against Jewish people who have had success in the newspaper business, but nothing illegitimate, nothing wrong about it. And he buys into this stereotyping and bigotry and then wants to point the finger at others and say that people like me are bigots. This is unbelievable. Well, again, he was trying to get the five million dollars from these guys. He was trying to please them. But by doing so, uh, he totally bought into the to the racism and anti-Semitism they were peddling, which, of course, yeah. they would have been peddling if they were Muslim brother. By the way, the, Schiller himself has left. But the woman that was with him, NPR executive uh, Betsy Lilly or Liley, yeah. she's NPR's director of institutional giving. She is still there, and she was parroting everything that Schiller was saying. So shouldn't she be leaving as well? Well, I, look, you know what? This guy, Schiller, this guy, Ron Schiller, you know, the president of NPR is Vivian Schiller. They're not related. But in my book, they've got one too many Schillers remaining. Uh, because what you see here is, again, I think this is a window inside the way they really think. When it came to public funding, federal funding for NPR, just yesterday, Vivian Schiller is at the National Press Club saying, oh, NPR desperately needs this federal funding. In this luncheon, he's saying to these men, hold, we don't need federal funding. We don't on a want second. federal funding. We have the tape. Let's roll the part where he talks about NPR funding. It is very clear that we would be better off in the long run without federal funding. So he says they'd be better off without the funding, whereas the boss is saying, no, we need the funding. What's the truth, Juan? Do they need it or not? Well, this comes down to my opinion. But look, they are, to me, you know what? There is no way that you would say that NPR is a priority given our financial struggles in this country in terms of poor, in terms of any of the needs, health care, or anything you want to put on the table, David. 
it's hard to make it out that NPR is a priority. What we can say is that, you know what, you look at the New York Times, the Washington Post, Fox News Channel, these are institutions that gather news and rely on advertising to support a, a, a product that the consumer says is worthwhile. And there are plenty of products out there. Speech. It's not as though they're the only product. Okay, no. finally, we got to hit the, the last one, which is where he talks about you. Let's play the tape and get your response. Can Juan Williams, when he makes a statement like he made, can he report to the Muslim population, for example, and be believed? And the answer is no. He lost all credibility, and that breaks your basic ethics um, as a journalist. So you're not to be believed by Muslims, <laughs> but he's supposed to be believed by Israel and Jews, even though he says, we don't have any Jews here. Well, look at this. You know, talk about hypocrisy, David. Talk about who has credibility and doesn't have credibility. I said what I said publicly. I don't differ from it, and it, I expressed a personal feeling. It was not a policy prescription, and I certainly wasn't selling it as a basis for bigotry. I think what he was doing was selling his position in order to get that $5 million, and he didn't care where it was coming from, even if it came from people associated with the Muslim Brotherhood. So I'll let you be the judge, David Asman, as to who has credibility here. All right. And once again, he's gone, but the woman who was there was parroting most of the things he said going along with him is still there. Juan yep. Williams, good to see you. Thank you very much. Appreciate